Welcome back to Viewpoint. Alex Rodriguez is in tough negotiations with Major League Baseball to save himself from a lifetime ban and, of course, to salvage his potential spot in the Hall of Fame. Somewhere, Mark McGuire is laughing at those chances. But A-Rod's now among nine players who are about to face severe penalties for use of performance-enhancing drugs, or PEDs. Rodriguez is the highest paid player in baseball and easily the most famous linked to all these doping scandals. He reportedly got his PEDs from an anti-aging clinic in Florida called Biogenesis of America. And since then, he's accused of recruiting other athletes to the clinic, then lying about it and trying to destroy any evidence. You know, guy stuff. Lawyers for Rodriguez have said they would fight any lifetime ban, then he could possibly return to play while the appeals process is taking hold. So the question is, what impact will all of this have on what used to be America's pastime? Well, Nadia Dejani is the founder and host of Caught Off Base with Nadia.com, a show that's chock full of great interviews with Nadia and various athletes and celebrities, and even a lot of my guys on the New York Mets. Nadia, welcome to Viewpoint. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. So we just saw one of baseball's biggest stars, Ryan Braun of the Milwaukee Brewers, got a 65-game suspension for using performance-enhancing drugs. Alex Rodriguez, as you know, is facing this lifetime ban. Eight others could get 50-game suspensions. What is this doing to the perception of the game at this point? Can the, I mean, it's like the Catholic Church. Can the PR get any worse? Yeah, it's pretty bad. And uh, baseball took such a hit after the strike in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was ironically the steroid era that brought it back. So now that we're seeing the effects of uh, the steroid era in the Hall of Fame and, and what it's doing to these little kids who are trying to look up to these guys, I think uh, it's going to be hard to bounce back. It will bounce back. It always has. It always will. But I think it's tough. I think you're asking, they're asking these fans to, you know, a family of four saves up, you know, to go to one baseball game a summer. I think it's asking a lot to accept all of this as well. Because you're helping give $61 million to a guy who cheats. That's right. Well, so then, I guess, considering how powerful the players' union is, mm. and assuming they don't cut A-Rod loose, which I don't think they will, um, how long could his appeal process go on for? Well, you know, it really depends. First of all, they're never going to get a lifetime ban you on him. Think. It's not going to happen. No way. But I, they may ask for one, and then they negotiate down. But even if it's, let's say, the rest of this year and next year, just over 200 games, maybe 220, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, he appeals. He gets to stay in the game. He gets paid while he's doing it. And then if he sits out with this quad strain, you know, coming back from hips, he's coming back. He's, I think, 38. 38. Mm -hmm. So by the time he comes back, he's almost 40. And the Yankees still owe him three years. So then, so over sixty million dollars. So that leads me to two questions. Number yeah. one, would a two hundred game suspension effectively end his career anyway? I mean, it depends what you mean by end it. Will he play? Is there a team that would have him suit would up? Would he hobble play? out? Sure. And, you know. Yeah, I think he's just arrogant enough and massively insecure that his whole career has been about trying to prove himself and prove himself. And the irony is that he had all the skills. He absolutely was better defensively than Derek Jeter and Nomar and mm -hmm. everybody knew that. And he just has been living in Derek Jeter's, Jeter's shadow for, you know, all these years. And I think it just kills him. So if he did get to come back, though, one could presume that a GM could figure people will pay to see this guy. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be in New York. And my guess, if I, in my opinion, I would say that the Yankees would probably try to negotiate a term down, you know, a settlement with him rather than this three years and 61 million. So then what is the lifetime ban really about? Is the, and why would they leak it if it's not to try and shake him down, get him to cooperate, and just name everybody? Yeah, I think that's Bud Selig's way of um, trying to have his last, you know, hurrah. He was the one that took a big, big hit in the late 90s with McGuire and Sosa and the home run chase, you know, not coming down harder on them and, the, and taking so long to implement these rules uh, for testing and steroids. And I think this is his last hurrah to try to seem like he's coming in with the cavalry. You know, it, it seems like baseball was our national pastime, then basketball was our national pastime, <laughs> then hating LeBron was our national pastime. Yes. But when you look back to the 90s, you were referencing the big home run mm. era. Are the fans the real hypocrites here? When you think about the fact that we'll cheer on a, a home run race if it's driven by steroids, yeah. and yet we'll boo the same guys who gave us those thrills years later. You know, it's a very good question. I don't think so. I think people love a home run, but I think they also really love a great, um, you know, uh, pitcher's duel. And we're sort of entering, oddly, that era again after they were juicing these balls and they lowered the mound and mm -hmm. brought in the fences. And I think... Um, 
which I like, by the way, a lot less home runs, but much more intense games. Yes, I preferred the you know 70s where the pitcher sort of dominated everybody, and uh, but I, I it, it remains to be seen. Well, all the Hall of Fame inductees this year, as you know, were uh, were old timers who died several years ago because the sports writers said they wouldn't <laughs> vote for players from the steroid era. Although yeah. some did because nothing's proved, so they went ahead and did it anyway. That's right. Um, how are you seeing the sports suffer long term from all of this? Can the sport bounce back? Yeah, I think it does bounce back. It always does, but I, there's going to have to be a. a a Michael Jordan. Uh, there's going to have to be an Alex Rodriguez of baseball to a come clean along. A Alex clean Rodriguez. One. And there's a great quote I was looking today at an interview that he did in 2009 after he got busted the first time where he said, you know, I would never put that in my body. And his quote is, I'm pretty tired of being stupid and selfish, you know, about myself. And I thought, well, <laughs> is there another way of being <laughs> selfish? Not as isn't? tired as we are, my yeah, God. Yeah, I mean, he's... Wow. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing what happens over the next few days. It should be very interesting, especially for Yankee fans. Founder and host of Caught Off Base with Nadia.com. Nadia Dejani, thank you so much for coming on Viewpoint. Thank you for having me. What a pleasure. Okay, so here's my question, friends. What do Edward Snowden, Vladimir Putin, and Ecuadorian broccoli have in common? So that happened, we'll tell you the greatest global conspiracy coming up next.